Hey guys, I'm just going to do my reaction video to The Flash, Season 5, Episode 18, Godspeed. A long-anticipated episode I've been waiting for a month to watch because, you know, 517 Time Bomb, we had, we finally got to see the new Cicada in action. The team put two and two together that the new Cicada was a future, was a Grace Gibbons from the year 2049, um, who came back in time for the Time Spear, that was through Thawne's time spear that was kept in storage and an offsite. It was kept offsite in a um, storage center for Star Labs. I mean, although it's, it, it it creates kind of a plot hole because of the fact that everyone is. It's kind of sad that the writers think we're that stupid that we forgot about um, Barry destroying the time spear at the end of the season one finale to prevent Thawne going back to the future, which. You know, it was a pretty iconic scene. I, I doubt that many people forgot about it. It was a very iconic scene in the series. Um, but anyway, that's how she that's how she traveled back from the future to 2019. You know, she got you know, Dwyer's dagger. She got Orlin Dwyer after after getting the cure, um, and apparently a cure that cured um, Chris Klein of his incredibly is painfully hammy acting. Um, so even he was kind of, even you can tell throughout the episode, even he was kind of shocked and just horrified that, you know, he took out, he took on the man, the cicada mantles to make the world a safer place for grace by killing off all these metas. But then it's like the fact that she became like a merciless serial killer in the future, carrying on, you know, carrying on his, the cicada mantle, let him really unsettled. Especially since we found out that um, the circumstances behind the death of Grace's parents. A man a human who I guess has the power to like supercharge objects is kind of similar to Plastique or Gamut from X-Men. You know, her powers were acting up but she was trying to get money from the ATM and so she it kind of she kinda of got freaked out and ran off and not realizing that she accidentally supercharged the ATM. So when Grace's parents we see that through a vo um, through one of Cisco's vibes that um, Grace's parents, you know, were there after the ATM was supercharged and the explosion accidentally killed killed Grace's parents. But she was a witness to all this and you know presumably scarred. It, I felt like it did have parallels to you know Bruce Wayne witnessing the death of his own parents at the hands of Joe Chill or say like um, Hunter Zolomon on Earth Two witnessing the death of his mom at the hands of his own father. So. It, it, it's, it's scarred her enough as well as like, you know, additional circumstances with, you know, the turbulent relationship he init she initially had with Orlin and then being put in a coma from the, from um, DeVos Satellite and, you know, soaking up their anti-meta rhetoric from him and Dr. Ambers while she was in a coma and so being able to know, being self-aware of everything that was going on around her, um... I can kind of see how she was kind of driven off the deep end, but even to the point where Orlin is horrified that when he tries to go after um, the parents' killer and tries to convince her that, you know, he was wrong, the death was an accident, he went about it the wrong way, he never wanted this for her, and, you know, don't let go of this hate and don't make things too, you know, it's not too late for you like it is for me, but um, it, it, it proves that one it's one of the things that proves that Grace this version of Grace is so unhinged that she's willing to like kill her uncle with his own dagger. <coughs> she had the same teleconnect same connection to because of the shard in her head. There's also the fact that she's also willing to kill like regular humans just to get this to achieve her goals. Um and then there's the fact that um you know, because, you know, apparently Thawne supposedly never saw the intervention of a second cicada. He just says he, while they were talking in Iron Heights with um, Nora at the beginning of the episode, she says that, I thought I knew what I was doing. I was wrong. There's nothing, there's nothing I can do to, I, I can't help you anymore. There's nothing, there's, it's too late. There's nothing, there's nothing left I can do to help you. Just tell your father everything that we've been doing. And it was sad that she was finally mustering up the courage to do so by the end of the episode, but Sherlock was already investigating 
Nora, and he finally deco- he finally you know de- had the speed force language of her d- diary decoded, not reading through the details of like why Nora lied herself with Thom, but just trying to figure out like who he's lied with, and you know through his investigations, um, and looking f- I'm looking at like a, a little like, f- data chip that he you know watched a video in the time vault, he realized that. You know, Thon posing as well was her partner, and before Nora had the chance to, you know, give her side of the story, um, Sherlock came in and basically just explained everything, you know, and not real, and you know, acting as if she had malevolent, malevolent intentions, and you know, the whole team Flash was shook, and Barry was so pissed, considering that you know her daughter, his daughter, was working with his arch enemy, you know, in blind rage, kind of just like threw her into the pipeline, and you know. You know, was you know, kind of just walked away, not willing to hear a side of the story. Hopefully, because you, hopefully, you know, Iris is or somebody's willing to hear a side of the story. It's supposed to be like a flashback slash fa- um, flash forward episode to how she, you know, discovered her powers, how she got into league with Thawn. It's supposed to be the the debut of Godspeed in live action, which. I had to go watch a YouTube video getting his background and his history, and he seems like a fairly interesting character, and I know he's gotten mixed receptions from comic book readers, but honestly, with all the hype behind him, I'm not ex- I'm not expecting them to do like a, a faithful adaptation of this character any more than they did a faithful adaptation of Shade back in Season 3, I remember watching from Justice League and was a huge fan of and was anticipating, you know, seeing their version of the um on the li- in live action, but he ended up being like a poor man's version of the smoke monster from Loss. Um again, I'm not expecting a faithful adaptation. I, I think it's prudent for for considering he's presumably just a villain of the week and just you know, part of North origin story. I don't think anybody should get their, their hopes up to think he will be anything more than that. But enough talking. I want to go into this episode. I want to check it out. This is going to be awesome. Let's do this. Maybe you should just give us a whole minute here. Well, you're mad at me for doing what a master detective does. Figure out something that you cannot. I gave you that translation. Your anger is misplaced. Take that, asshole. Whatever reason Nora didn't tell us, I don't think she did it maliciously. Thank you. Guys, even from here, I can feel how upset she is. All right, babe, you've been around Nora for a while. I'm so sorry. I just been really late. I'm remember really late for an important date. Not, not a date date. Not that I don't date date. I date date. I just, I have a meeting. I'm making myself later. <laughs> sorry. I like that Anyone so seen CSI? So Thank you. Where uh, is West Out? Uh, I'm so pilot. sorry, Detective Curtis. I didn't mean to be late. I tried to hail a hover taxi, but they kept passing me by. Nora! Nora! Oh! Somebody help, please! The short Somebody out of shit. Stay calm. There has been an incident. System check in progress. What the hell? I like the peril. Parallels. I'm okay. You sure? <sighs> yeah, dude. I'm a speedster. All of my nerves are tingling and my synapses must be going crazy because my- How am I going to explain like how Fawn ended up here after Crisis on Earth X? Am I'm I really going gonna- Please, I need your help. Come on, let's go. Come on! Time to repent, Professor. Okay, that's unexpected. They torture him? 
Vigilantes. Leah, I found it. Only the callbacks, only the callbacks. Oh, unless you're super speed game with super biceps, we are not getting this out of here. That's mine. Oh, no. One person in the world she thought she could trust died in her arms. Nora well, must have felt completely alone. But she wasn't. Yes, she was. Because I wasn't honest with her. Iris. After all I did, she gave me a second chance. It's the least we can do for her. Thank you. Thank you. Leah found it before she died. You put this inside of me, Mom. To dampen my powers? You lied to me my whole life. I know. Who else knows? Who else? been keeping this from me. God speeds lightning. You turn blue. Just Velocity. like Zeus. Velocity. Wait a sec. Velocity 9. Is stopping him from becoming a speedster permanently is a stabilizing agent. Once he gets that, he will be unstoppable. I told you to leave. Guard. Please. He killed my best friend in front of me. She's gone because of him, and you are the only person that can stop it. What the hell? Your body, your cells, will be in such a state, and they will phase right through that wall. I can't do this! Nora. From there, from him, then why can't she have face a plane in the scene premiere? I can't do it. Never mind. Then goodbye, little runner. Wait for it, Nora. Wait. Y yes. Nora. I don't have much time. If you're watching this, it means you're like me. You have powers. It also means I wasn't there to help you learn how to use them. I wasn't there for a lot of things. Remember, my sweet Nora. The team. I do. I even understand going to Thawne. To learn how to do it, but... You can't go back. Even after you knew what he did. Even after he wasn't your only option anymore. Please don't do this. I promise I will never see Thawne again. Dead!
God, don't do this! Laura, if you try to run back in time again, I will feel it in the speed force. I'll know. Goodbye, Norm. You had to try to take my daughter from me, too? My daughter! I hate to react like this. I'm always so emotional, which is why I had her keep all of this from you. You can't blame the little runner, Barry. But you just wanted to spend some time with her dad. Don't hold that against her. Consider it a condemned man's last request. You always thought you were so much smarter than us, thought. But you lost. So yeah, that was a pretty intense episode, like I thought. Um, they weren't going to, you know, do much with Godspeed, make him a faithful adaptation. I mean, they at least made him August Hart, but again, he was going to be a villain of the week, so I don't know why everybody got so hyped, hyped up about it. But anyway, I, I there is a part of me, I don't know. At first, like, before watching this episode, it's like, it seems like everybody else on the rest of Team Flash should be more understanding about Nora and willing to give her the benefit of the doubt and willing to hear her side of the story. I like how um, Iris basically called him out for not trying to investigate more into what her intent, you know, looking into what her intentions were and basically telling him to basically telling him to take a hike. Um, so yeah, definitely points for her. Um, yeah, I mean. I can understand, like, why... I mean, this is to give some context as to why she went to Thawne, because apparently everybody, in, including um, Speedster or otherwise, or anybody on Team Flash, was basically lying to her about her origins. But the fact that um, Nora's friend, Leah, was talking about how, like, all the Speedsters disappeared during the crisis, it means that it wasn't just Barry. It makes you wonder if, you know, if, you know Wally, Jig... Gary, the accelerated man, maybe even Jesse Quick died in the crisis or disappeared, which is why she was, I guess, Lathan is the only speedster mentor that she had. Um, I mean, I kind of suspected that, you know, everybody lying to her and, you know, Thon being the only one that was being candid with her is why it kind of what, is what led to them forming that bond. Um, You know, it is pretty similar to say like Negan on this season of The Walking Dead, where she was very, he was very candid with Judith about his crimes, and yet you know, um, he had him showing everybody else like keeping her in the dark about stuff, and so of course that she would gravitate towards Negan. So it's kind of a similar dynamic, kind of reminded me of that. Um, I trusted that Nor, you know, Iris would be the one that wanted to hear um, Nora's side of the story. You know, well. Barry's being hot-headed, and I was kind of like, I was kind of finding it hard to sympathize with, um, I mean, at first I was like, you know, Barry's being kind of a hypocrite considering that he was the one who, um, he, he went crawling to Thawne twice, as he acknowledged, you know, going back in time to that same day that they had to fight Pied Piper, um, and 217 in the 100th episode, and, you know, it's the fact that it's like, you know, he, Barry, because of plot and stupidity, was the one who let um, Thawn go at the end of Christ on Earth X. And, you know, he, you know he, would, he would let him run off the scheme for another day. So, of course, he was going to still be waiting in the wings to make some kind of plan. And what pissed me off about this episode is that they still didn't explain, like, how he ended up getting caught since then and why he ended up in Iron Heights. Um but, um,
I mean, yeah, that question still hasn't been answered. I don't know if they're even going to bother to answer that question because they don't even they haven't even bothered to acknowledge like how he came back by the events of Christ on Earth X because laziness and one of the reasons why I feel like I'm going to be glad that we're getting a new showrunner for season six. Um, I'm glad Barry acknowledged there was a line Barry acknowledged saying that. Um, you know, I, I understand the, the the option to go back to him. I I did. I, I do, but you kept going back to him when you had other options. So I can kind of understand his side of the story and be less judgmental. And I wasn't surprised by the idea that he that um, Barry would bring her back to the future and basically for, forbid him from ever coming back to the present day and seeing them ever again because of it. But, you know, of course, it's not going to last. We saw her because, I mean, there have been sad photos. That she comes back and helps the team to stop Cicada. Um, reading the synopsis for the next episode, it seems like, um, Iris is going to have a hand in trying to, you know, bring Nora back. Maybe she'll take the time spear to go bring her back from the future. And, um, yeah, apparently they're going to be dealing with Icicle next week. I mean, this is the thing I'm kind of worried about. It seems like, you know, the next couple of episodes are going to be dealing with Ice School and the Rogues when I feel like it should be focusing on Cicada. The ship for, you know, and say that for season six. Yes, if, you know, they focused on stopping the Orland Dwyer in the 100th episode made, and maybe done a little mini arc involving Ice School and the Young Rogues, I wouldn't be cool with that. But, you know, given they spent so much time with Dwyer and, you know, the season's coming to a close, I like the... Um, Sarah Carter is um, Grace Gibbons Cicada. You know, I I'll go as far as to say she's the best villain since Thawne and Zoom. And we're gonna I'm I'm worried about how little focus they're gonna spend on her and they're trying to like haphazardly tie up loose ends, whereas like they're doing bidding up biting off more than they can chew, but we'll see. But like I said, it was a pretty damn good episode. Didn't answer every question I wanted to, but it answered enough, and I did feel some sympathy for Nora for why he, she would turn to Thawne. Um, yeah, I kind of like the callbacks and the parallels to her, like, discovering her powers, you know, getting the same speech from Thawne about phasing and, you know, the, the velocity and I, and didn't quite understand the whole satellite stuff, but whatever. Um... Uh, yeah, overall, pretty solid. You know, pretty solid episode. Um, met most of my expectations, and I kind of look forward to see where they're going to go with the next couple of episodes. What do you guys think of it? Do you think this episode was worth the wait? Um, what do you like and did not like? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.